Hey, this is Madeline Sklar. And Suze Cooper, and you're listening to All Things Audio. Let's jump right in with this tweet that we found from um, Sajad. Hey, I can see you here in the space. Um, Twitter is rolling out the Listen Live in Spaces widget on Twitter web, so on the desktop. Madeline, have you seen this on your desktop version? Yes. So this is one of those moments like I remember where I was and what I was doing when this thing happened. So it happened this last Saturday. I was hosting my Saturday space where we do our Twitter profile reviews. And as I've mentioned many times here in spaces, I I will always have my desktop computer computer in front of me as well. So I always have my, my mobile device on a tripod right in front of my face so I can see everything here in spaces. But I also have it on the web because it's a lot bigger and easier to read. And I kept noticing the browser looked different on Twitter. I'm like, why, why is something out? Cause I'm really just looking on mobile mostly, but just something out of the corner of my eye just kept, I'm like, what something's different on the screen on Twitter. And I'm like, what? it dawned on me like, Oh my gosh, the new thing that says, listen live in spaces. They put spaces discoverability on desktop suits. What was your thought when you saw that? About time too. <laughs> Yay. We yes. needed this, didn't we? We did. I mean, look, we love spacesdashboard.com. We will always love it. It will always be superior when it comes to discoverability on spaces. But how nice to have this ability to just very quickly in the corner on spaces to, on Twitter to see like, oh, some people you know are speaking in spaces right now. Hopefully people are seeing us right now on desktop because we're here live. Yeah, I've just I've just clicked the uh, the show more. Um, hyperlink on the bottom of that square and it has revealed what essentially looks like the old spaces tab from the mobile version Uh, a load of purple cards with listen live set reminder listen live listen live on them and one of them is ours so we are there we're featured it's not pretty to look at but they just stacked them all but hey look it's better than nothing which is what we've had so it, it's been a little refreshing to to have that ability. I I have noticed some spaces going on. I'm not on mobile as much. I'll be honest. I'm usually on desktop. And like right now, uh, somebody that's going to be our guest next week on the Twitter Smarter Chat, she is right now in a space speaking that I can see clearly on desktop. So well, I think a lot of people on mobile normally see that at the top of their feed in the spaces bar and, and you know get that glimpse. For somebody like me that's on desktop way more, this is pretty nice. I, I'm catching more spaces while I'm working during the day because I will notice that. Yeah, and it's it's pretty neat up there in the corner, isn't it? It gives us all the same information as it does on mobile so we can see you know who's speaking or who's hosting and uh, a, a kind of counter a number as to how many people are in there so at the moment the the best of live audio is uh speaking in a space on google ai there's a presentation that's going on there there's around 455 people according to my um my counter here that are in that space it's just kind of quick easy information at a glance it's exactly what was needed it's a little reminder up there in the corner that spaces are a thing when you're on desktop because it was very very easy to just forget they were even a feature if you're just on desktop all the time so I think it's a great place to have put it it seems to fit quite seamlessly into that panel where you're looking for you know you'll naturally look over there because the the kind of what's happening the who to follow those kind of bits of information are usually on that right hand side of your screen I think it's worked out well I think it's good it's a good spot. It's good placement. I, I, I think they picked the perfect spot for it. So it'll be interesting to see when you click to see more if they improve on that secondary page. Absolutely, it, it will. Yeah, whether or not they, they kind of try and tidy it up a little bit. As you say, it, it does look quite basic. It looks a bit like a, a Hello World version, shall we say at the moment, but at least it is a version. Definitely. So I have a huge announcement, as you may see in the nest. Um, After almost eight years of the weekly Twitter Smarter Chat, every Thursday, one o'clock Eastern, I'm finally, I have finally decided to just make it a space only instead of the old school chat at one Eastern and the spaces after chat at five o'clock Eastern. I've combined it into one. I'm going all in on spaces. What do you think, Suze? Was this a shocker? Because I've been very adamant about not doing this. And George Silverman 
has been almost harassing me for quite some time that I need to do this. Um, but I finally took a really long, hard look into it and made the decision starting this week. I had to read it twice, if not three <laughs> times, to make sure that that what it said is really what it meant. Because the Twitter Smarter chat was, I mean, that's how I found you, Madeline. That's where this all began. Like, I used to join the Twitter Smarter chat on a Thursday. Um, you know, Twitter chats are were just such a a huge part of the platform um, for quite some time. There are many, many of them that, that have been and gone, but yours has absolutely been a mainstay for that format and, uh, and a gold star format, at, you know, at that, that your, your, um, your version of it just worked, you know. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's going to be different. But, you know, you've obviously got your reasons for moving from one to the other. Part of being involved and hosting um, a chat is to have a chat. And now we can actually have that chat <laughs> using our voices in spaces. So really, it kind of feels like a, a natural progression, I guess. It really does. I mean, I've been having a version of it in spaces for the last two years, actually more than two years since I became a beta host. But it was the secondary part of the chat. The the highlight was and the focus has always been the old school Twitter chat. And I'm really starting to call this old school Twitter chat now because a big part of my decision in going in this direction is that we've got so many more people on Twitter in these last few years that really in this spaces era that don't know what Twitter used to be like, uh, you know, with, with the way it is today. And they don't understand old school Twitter chats. They don't understand how you have a conversation around a hashtag. And actually for quite some time, at least six months, when we start the old school chat at one o'clock Eastern Thursdays, people will be like, I'm in spaces. When is it? Start? I'm waiting. And it's like, no, that's part two later today. And it was so much confusion, Sue. So I, you know, I love audio. I love spaces. I love, I love all things audio. <laughs> um, no pun. Uh, but it just seemed like now is the right time to pivot. And actually, when you are working in digital marketing, it, it changes constantly, especially in social media. And you sometimes just need to pivot and, and roll with the changes. And that's what I decided to do. So it'll be interesting. But it really shows you that I am all in on spaces. I'm all in on social audio. I think this is such a great way to connect with your audience to um, meet so many new people. Yes, I met you through the old school Twitter Smarter Chat and a lot of other people. And even though I've been hosting that for almost eight years and everybody always said, wow, you're so good at hosting Twitter chats and you know so much. I actually started hosting Twitter chats in 2011. I already had a lot of experience before I even started the Twitter Smarter Chat. But we have to work with what is given to us and the tools in Twitter were not what they are today. And so a Twitter chat was a great way to have a conversation with like-minded people in the course of an hour, like what we're doing here. But who would have thought all these years later, we could all have a conversation all over the world with each other on our phones. Yeah. I mean, when you started it, you would never have imagined you could have actually had the conversation with people. So it's, you know, I, th I think as someone who's, you know, worked in, in digital marketing and seen how things change, what you're doing is, is showing how you need to keep up with that progression and with the changes and, and change things, even if you have been doing them for lots of years. There are new ways, new tools, and it's okay to change the format of stuff. So I'm really excited for you. And um, yeah, I just know it's going to be great in its new guise as well. So really looking forward Thank to that you. for you. Thank you. I'm excited. It's just making sure everybody understands. And then I, you know, on the flip side of this, I have the old school chat people that are not really using spaces. So I'm trying to figure out how to fully explain how this little, that purple bubble that we all see at the bottom right on our mobile devices, that right there is the old school chat inside of spaces. So I think I just need to work on educating the old school people on this newer way. We can still be having a discussion inside of Twitter by typing. So we'll see how that goes. I'll report back. Yeah, do. Definitely. Um, I'm really excited about this next tweet, Madeline. Um, there's finally been murmurings that there might be people behind the scenes working on some stuff for Twitter spaces, as in, you know, bug fixes and streaming issues and even potentially maybe in future 
some new features. Um, this is really exciting news, isn't it, Madeline? It's been a really long time since we've had any kind of confirmation that they want to not only maintain spaces, but they actually want to continue to build it up and want people to use it. This is so exciting to hear. You may remember before Elon Musk took over, it was probably the last town hall we had with the Spaces team. They were saying that desktop speaking was coming. Like I, It sounded like that was going to be the next big thing, that as hosts and speakers, we could do this on desktop and not have to be on mobile. And so many of us have been requesting it. I had been requesting it since the beginning when I was a beta host because on desktop, you can easily have your good audio equipment. Now, you and I know how, as podcasters, we know how to do this through our phones, but I would much rather have all this gear plugged in through my computer than through my iPhone. Um, so I'm just really disappointed that that never did happen with Twitter spaces. And we've, we're still waiting for a feature like that. But in seeing this tweet the other day, I was so excited, like, okay, they want to know, they want to hear from us with spaces. Like we, we haven't had that chance in a while, Suze, not since Elon took over because the team is gone, you know, that was always asking. We, ha we haven't had that that megaphone call. Yeah, we we were like directly plugged into that Spaces team and we could contact them anytime and they would listen. And it's like, we're just all just waiting, twiddling our thumbs going, okay, what's coming next? What else, you know, we all had like big old lists of things we want in Spaces. Our next one, our next tweet was one that um, Morgan put out yesterday, um, which is actually around people creating fewer Twitter Spaces, which isn't great news, is it? Uh, no, I, but I tell you what, I, Suze, I've been noticing a little bit of a decline in spaces just from spaces that I'm hosting and co-hosting. It seems like in the last several months, there's a bit of a decline with live listeners, but still seeing good numbers on the replay. And so when I saw this tweet from Morgan, I was like, you know, this doesn't really surprise me that there, there are fewer spaces created. Um, I, you know, it's something I think that could be a seasonal thing. I know some people responded and were talking in that Twitter thread ab about things like that. I don't know. What do you think it is? I don't know. I think my, I think the uncertainty, the general level of uncertainty on Twitter in general, I think has spooked people. Perhaps, you know, some of those more established broadcasters, well, some of them have left the platform completely, as we know. There have been fallouts. There have been you know, people that have left, I wouldn't really imagine that the people that have left have directly contributed to there being fewer spaces because not everyone that's left would have particularly spun up a space at any time. But that may have also had a knock on. And actually, when you add all of those factors together, that does end up having um, an impact, I guess. Um, but you're right. You know, I see fewer spaces in the in the tab and we see let's be honest we've seen fewer people joining us live here on all things audio from this time last year say um and I, yeah i think there are fewer people around there are fewer people putting putting all of their creativity and thoughts into what they can do with social audio because they're so uncertain about it um i'm not sure what needs to happen to build that back up again um or whether or not it's an integral people not liking the way that Twitter is appearing right now. You know, there's a lot of disquiet around Elon, around decisions and choices, around business decisions for Twitter. And that is going to have an effect on how long people want to hang around on Twitter and spend time here. And one thing Spaces does do is get people to spend time on Twitter. If you're in a space, you know, some people will be here for the full hour that we're live and we love you for it. Thank you. Um, but that keeps people here on this app. And some people don't want to spend that time over here anymore for that amount of time. So, yeah, I think all of those different things feed into this drop. Equally, the sun is out finally here in the UK. I mean, it's actually probably raining right now, but today has been a sunny day. We have been waiting for spring for a really long time. <laughs> so, you know, the sun's out. People don't want to stay in quite so much as they used to. Um, they might be out and about doing other things. And yeah, we might see this seasonal drop off uh, in, the, in the sunny weather 
And then as soon as we hit kind of, you know, September, October, people will start flooding back to us again because we're all cold and we want to sit indoors with our headphones on. <laughs> <laughs> I think time will tell, though, well, you know, with these stats, these numbers, I, you know, it could be just people just not into this anymore. They're, uh, they're on to other things. They're not on the platform as much. Who knows? The weather's getting nice around the world. So, yeah, I think we'll, we'll, we'll keep checking in on this and uh, see how that goes. I think it's worth kind of tying this back into and slightly bringing Clubhouse into this a little bit. You know, Clubhouse has kind of repointed its direction into creating these smaller groups, more about friendships, less about kind of productions and shows and, and things like that. And I think maybe that's where social audio is landing, certainly at the moment. It's about these smaller groups, smaller communities. That's why we're seeing uh, subscriber only Twitter spaces being touted as a thing because I think in those smaller groups and we spoke about this when we first started it Madeline like it was great having a hundred people listening to us live in all things audio on the one hand on the other hand how many of those those people did we get to know and build up a relationship because how many people can you really have that conversation with you know a smaller group of people works really neatly and really nicely and I wonder if the other element to it is not that people aren't interested in social audio, but that they're only going to jump into somewhere where they feel like they're part of that community, they're part of that conversation, they can be heard, they are respected for their opinions uh, when they're brought up to the mic, all that kind of thing, which I really hope is the kind of safe space that we've created here at All Things Audio. And so that is actually where social audio is is heading at the moment. And we've had this moment where everybody jumped in and we had all these spaces with all these people like gathered and listening and whatever. But actually, when it boils down to it, we wondered where it might land. And at the moment, I think it's landing in this kind of more niche, smaller communities where you can have these more intimate conversations and build real relationships, which after all is exactly what we've said social audio is absolutely key for. Um, you know, talking to one another and voices just gives so much more information than we can do in a tweet. As you're finding, you know, with the, the Twitter Smarter Chat, Madeline, you can go way deeper into the topics that you're going to be talking about and you'll be able to hear from, you know, really knowledgeable people literally hear from them and that builds the relationship. So maybe it's just this plateau at the moment that's finding this new kind of more community-based place for social audio. Maybe. I just love everything you just said. That was excellent. That's why I'm doing the clapping emoji. That was so good. Oh, thank you. Thank you for the emojis. Let's talk about voice recordings in the DMs, because apparently this is coming on Twitter. Have you seen this yet? I've only seen the screenshots and articles. I have not seen it in my DMs. But wow, Suze, you know, you and I have been wanting this. Have you seen it yet? I haven't, no. And I even did the update. You sent me a DM yesterday and was like, there's an update. And I was thinking, right, this could be it. We may have the uh, the voice recorder in the DMs. No, it wasn't there. So, um, but it's exciting to see it. So this from social media today um, says that we will eventually be able to uh, use voice memos in the messages. I We spoke about this a few weeks ago about whether or not people liked voice notes. Um, it is a very divisive feature some people love them. Some people absolutely hate them because you don't know what's actually in them until you're listening. I mean, any DM function when it's left wide open can become an annoyance. I mean, certainly my LinkedIn DMs, sometimes I just wish I could turn them off completely with the amount of, you know, self-promotion and all of those kind of um, un unwanted messages that you get in there. Equally, if you use it properly, and certainly if you're using voice properly, as we've just said, it could build some really interesting and really great new connections for people. Absolutely. I'm really looking forward to this being more widely rolled out to everyone. Um, I had to share this really quick before we move on to our Clubhouse news. So Andrew from Spaces Dashboard, who I see is here live with us. Hey, Andrew, uh, posted a really interesting tweet earlier. It serves as a great reminder. If you're on iOS, you have an iPhone you may know that there's a way you can do a shortcut to a web page and put it wherever you want. And so he made this short little 44, I think it's about 44 second long video here that walks you through how to do that specifically for Spaces dashboard to make it easy to access on your phone. So, I, you know, sometimes I need those 
hit me over the head type of reminder, Suze, because it just never dawned on me to do that. It's, it's such a great idea. Yeah, I love a shortcut. And it's a really good idea to be able to have it just one tap away. Uh, you know, it, it looks quite neat. It's got the Spaces dashboard logo on there and it just appears then down on your home screen and you can just tap straight from there and see everything that you need to from Spaces dashboard. So yeah, it's a, it's a great little feature and good of Andrew to remind everyone that that's something you can do. Definitely. Now it's time for some Clubhouse news. There's a lot going on over on Clubhouse. Um, we've covered it over the last couple of weeks uh, around kind of different updates that are going on over there that have caused quite a bit of unrest, really, with regular users to Clubhouse. Um, so it'll be interesting to hear about these these latest changes. Um, again, they're, they're looking towards bringing Clubhouse to the web. So we've been talking a little bit about how, you know, spaces are now easier to access from the web because they're appearing in that um, panel on, on the right hand side on your screen on the web. Well, apparently all house rooms on Clubhouse are going to be coming to the web this week as well. So that's quite exciting. Clubhouse has historically been a mobile app. You haven't been able to access Clubhouse directly on the web, though lots of people have used the third party app Club Deck to do so. And in fact, we were restreaming to Club Deck for a while using using that um, that online app. So yeah, it's interesting to see that this is this is their next move. Hi, Morgan. So I'm just talking about Michael's tweet that he put out um, earlier today about house houses on Clubhouse coming to the web. So do, do you know more about that? Can you tell us more? Yeah, I had a little little play with that earlier. It's it looks like a development of what they tried to do before. Um, so now you if you're you can log in on the web and you can see any house room, public or or private. Um, so it looks like it's more designed for the members, people who want to go along to something and maybe they're working remotely and they have their computer open and <laughs> maybe they don't want to join on their on their phone, but they can do it all on their on their web browser now. Um, so it's. It's less, I think, about like a, a pro tool for hosts who want to run their rooms by the looks of it. Um, it, it was done very quickly, too. So I was speaking to the developer, Justin, who's basically the person who's doing all of the web stuff for Clubhouse. And he knocked this out in about two days and is going to be building it out more over the next couple of weeks. So he's looking for feedback on it. Oh wow! So this is kind of a, a almost a sudden shift then into into web. You think rather than yes. Yeah, so um, it's kind of an interesting stage. So what we what Clubhouse are doing at the moment is they kind of gone quiet in terms of talking about product while they build out this this bigger evolution. We don't know what that is, um, but one of the mantras we've been getting is trying to simplify the app experience. I think it's something that you've talked about is opening the app and thinking there's a lot going on here yeah basically know. opening the app taking a look and then the equivalent of turning around walking out of the room <laughs> and disappearing right, for a week <laughs> right right exactly that um and i think looking at the web version it looks much simpler um and i think the other story here is that one of the things that they've been experimenting with over the last year was this thing called a lounge right it's a permanently open room basically that anyone who's a member of a house can go and have a chat in. And part of the simplifying looks like they're turning that off. This is an experiment that they, they're canning, basically. Um, and web the web experience was tied to the lounge until now. So if you're getting rid of that, you need to then make the other house rooms accessible. So I think that's that's part of what's going on. That that's really interesting. I mean, when when they introduced the lounge, I think that's the point at which I started to get confused with where I could speak and who could hear me and and who I was talking to. I thought it was a nice idea to have that kind of always on lounge area where you could go in and other people that were part of the room, um, the part of the club, could see what you know whether or not you were there and could jump in in the moment and and chat with you as well. It was sort of a nice idea, but it was very strange then to understand what then happens beyond there in a in a room. What's the difference between that and the club? And then all of a sudden, everything changing over to houses anyway. So I think, you know, there's been a lot of um, 
changes and a, a lot of differences that have, have come into the app over the last kind of six to nine months, really, which have sort of made it certainly for me almost uh, unintelligible. I can't work out where I'm supposed to be or who can hear me when I talk or all those kind of things, which, again, you know, it's uncertainty, isn't it? We, we've spoken a little bit today about, you know, how numbers of spaces are, are falling um, slightly. So are we, I'm assuming we're seeing a similar stuff over on Clubhouse, knowing that some of the creators over there have been quite upset by the move from clubs to houses and feel like they're not being heard. Would that would that be fair to say that there's there's a drop there as well? Yeah, I think that is I think that is fair. And to quickly say something about the spaces thing, the most important part of that tweet is if the data is is right. Um, and I think even if you have a d- decent margin of error on that, what we're looking at is it's 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 fairly static, particularly like the the English speaking market. So this is not something that's growing very quickly if it is growing. And probably there's a seasonal decline. This is something we've, I think we've experienced enough now that during during the winter for these markets, people are, are often at home talking much more. And then there's this, this little drop off. So I don't think it's anything we should be too worried about. But over on Clubhouse as well, it it, it is, I think, because this period, the next couple of months, people are waiting to see what's going to happen. And because there's been this big change, this migration from clubs to houses, I do think it feels like quieter than normal right now. And there are still the small rooms and the good discussions going on. And I talked about this as the lifeblood of Clubhouse. These are the the friends you've made and you, you keep having these nice discussions with them. But we're also seeing... I think at the moment, like the the larger rooms or the different kinds of things that were more like shows, those are kind of on a pause at the moment. Or it is, it does feel quieter. So, yeah, I don't know. It, it's almost eerie, actually. Um, it, it, most of the discussions seem to be going on behind closed doors. And some of that is great because that's the, the more intimate spaces. Um, but if you just go and look at the hallway, you might wonder what's going on at the moment. And, and what about then the, I guess we could, th- this relates to, to spaces as well, but what about all those NFT spaces, all the crypto spaces, the Bitcoin stuff, all of that kind of almost flooded spaces at one point, like you could move for them. Um, is that community, certainly we're seeing less, I'm seeing less of that here on spaces is there kind of less of that on Clubhouse as well? Has that moved on? Are they more over on, I feel like they've moved over to Discord more than the Twitter and Clubhouse platforms, but but maybe I'm wrong. That's just me kind of putting my finger in the air. Yeah, I think that that is a strand of this. Um, so it became much more of a thing on Spaces than, than Clubhouse, that there are some like strong communities, particularly Bitcoin related, that that still meet on Clubhouse. But as a general trend, I think we all knew that Web3 and NFT spaces, there were a lot of them. And it was probably quite a large proportion of the larger turnout spaces that you saw. But Web3 stuff really has quietened down, particularly the NFT stuff. So there is still some interest, but I think across the board, you'll think you're seeing a lower turnout for that. There's also a community story there that many of these sold themselves as being about community. You would buy an NFT to join a community, but it turned out that many of those community bonds were not strong and they couldn't really last beyond the financial part. And as that financial part became much more difficult, there was a downturn we saw the community shrink. Um, And because those communities were heavy users of social audio as well, we've probably seen some of that shrink play play into turnouts there too. So it's still going on, but it seems to be a a smaller thing than it, than it was. Yeah, that that's interesting. I mean, I mean, Madeline, have you, have you been spotting as quite as many NFT and, and crypto spaces over here? I mean, as, as Morgan says, you know, it's important that the, the data is correct. I guess we're kind of going on our own gut feeling and, and hanging around on the app, our own observations as well. Have you seen as as much of that going on? I still see plenty of them, but not like what it was, 
you know, a year, year and a half ago. Um, it's, it's definitely changed a bit for sure. Um, but, you know, it's just interesting. Things are always going to change. And you got to know, like, where to move along with it, you know, in it, in front of it, or behind it. So Clubhouse just wasn't for me. You know, I was in it for a long time, and I just, I just didn't like the dynamics. The way you guys talk about it today sounds more appealing to me. So I feel like I need to go spend more time in there, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> it was confusing, and I agree with you, Suze. I mean, a lot of that confused me as well with the houses and just, I just didn't quite get it. You know, it. it right. Exactly. Yeah, I think you're absolutely right about the the changing things. And in a way, having like NFT spaces be less a part of the ecosystem is probably a good thing longer term. It opens up for more variety, I think. And probably there was an experience where people who weren't really into this sort of thing would have opened spaces, looked at the hallway and thought, my goodness me, um, this is not a place for me. So so I, I welcome that. And also the same on, on Clubhouse, I think. I think there's an experience of opening that and seeing certain kinds of rooms and thinking, well, this also isn't for me. But if you did see a, a shift there too towards rooms that are more about helping people meet each other and casual friendship rooms and this sort of thing, then maybe the constitution there could change for the for the better too. But you know, we'll we'll see how these things evolve. As always, we'll be here to talk about them. We will, we will. And I want to just relate back to um, Michael's second tweet that was popped in the nest a, a, a minute ago. So he actually uh, highlighted three noticeable impacts of the clubhouse layoffs. So we reported on this last week that um, fifty percent of the clubhouse staff have been let go. They said it wasn't a financial decision; it was more to do with being able to work on the new features and the new kind of route of Clubhouse in a more um, dynamic way. Uh, the remote teams were perhaps too remote, all of those kind of things. Um, Michael's highlighted that um, NFT token-gated houses are being discontinued. So that relates to what we've just been spoken speaking about. Um, the development of subscription houses has been suspended, which is one that we mentioned last week, and lounges in houses have been removed, as you've just said there. So, yeah, it definitely seems like, you know, simplifying what's in the app is uh, the name of the game. And they're, they're going to do that behind closed doors. They don't want to hear from users right now, but potentially once the changes have been made, um, maybe the doors will be open for them to, to listen to what everybody wants again. Yeah, no, it, it's more the feeling, I think, that they know what it is that they need to build by this point. The the sense of what this app does, the, the part that is very special and different from other places, is the thing to be worked on. And a number of other things. Token gated houses is an interesting one. Um, this was, I think, I think, I think it was fairly easy to spin up given the components that they had available to them and a thing to try out. But it's now a time of focusing on on the core and other quite interesting experiments. I was really interested in those experiments. They are either paused or to be you know removed or part of the simplification because it's not a time for that sort of thing. <laughs> it's look, we now know what we need to build and that is the thing we're going to focus on. And things that support that, the friendship mission, these are the things that we focus on and things that maybe are less important to that or even actively get in the way of that are a sort of distraction is those things either are paused or have to go. So I, I welcome that kind of focus and I look forward to seeing the end result of that. And it's also a kind of a, a relief, I think, for many of us because the beta period with the houses was quite intense. There was an update every two weeks. There was always a lot to try and work out. Some of that, I think, is really exciting but also I think a lot of people began to feel uh, that they'd welcome some stability, a period where things didn't change quite so much. And we could get on with <laughs> making friends and getting to know each other and not just talking about the platform we were on. So 
Yeah, there's some of that too. And again, we'll see what happens in the next few months, but I welcome the chance to to, to talk less about the app and more, more about the people I've met now. Yeah, to use the app rather than talk about using the app. Exactly that, exactly that, yeah. Yeah, I mean, you know, our space probably isn't a great example of how not to do that, but still, um, I totally get what you mean. Yeah, there, there's definitely other communities and other ways for these uh, these apps and, and features to be used. So, yeah, interesting. It feels, feels like laser focus is the point at Clubhouse. They've focused their team, they're focusing their plan, they know what they're going for, and we're all just sitting to wait and watch and, and see what that might be. I do have a question uh, for you, Morgan. What's the latest with Blue Sky? I know that like this whole audio kind of spaces like feature has been worked on. It sounds like more is happening. Honestly, I got into Blue Sky a few weeks ago. I haven't been in there much. The audio feature sounds interesting that's being worked on, but I need to just go spend time doing it. Can you fill us in on what's the latest? Yeah, I, I could I could talk a bit about the audio side. I mean, one of the things that happened this week is The Verge wrote up part of what the developer is doing there in the Hot Pods newsletter. Um, so it got some attention there. Um, I think The Verge has an interest here in anything that is against Twitter. So you have some some caution there that they're going to write a very positive thing. Um, it it's an interesting experiment. The the vibes there can be quite good. Um, there's a real, I think, struggle that they're going to have with distribution. So Blue Sky um, at the moment has one main app, which is where most people use it. And then Sky Spaces is a separate thing by a third-party developer. So, for example, you can't use the main Blue Sky app and see when a live uh, audio space is going on. You have to sort of catch somebody sharing a link about it, which imagine having Twitter Spaces, but without having the Spaces hallway and the space bar in the app that you'd have to go somewhere else. Or if somebody tweeted a space, you'd have to catch that tweet in time. So I think that's going to be a real issue for them. Um, but it is interesting as an experiment. It's somebody who is very deeply into Twitter spaces and is basically trying to make, firstly, a clone of that, and then in how they think they're improving on it. So one of the things is that they've added streaming video to the top of an audio space, which is... No, a really interesting experiment to see and think how it changes the dynamics of a space. Um, but I, I, <laughs> I, I, I wonder, you know, even let's say Twitter Spaces is directly integrated into this platform, and we know that there's a, Twitter has a huge user base, and yet the, the the actual number of people who use Spaces is, I would say, like it's. It's still relatively a niche for what Twitter does. It's a wonderful, important niche, and having people experience what it is to have this kind of conversation is great. But Sky Spaces is going to have a real struggle, I think, because they basically are attached to a Twitter-like network, but with much poorer visibility and discovery. So it's, it's going to be a real uphill challenge. So I would approach it as an experiment at the moment, um, but maybe not really as the future, I think, if I'm being candid about it. I put an article from The Verge in the Nest. I imagine this is the one you're talking about, the article that came out yesterday that says live audio is getting another go on Blue Sky. That's is right, that yeah. Okay. yeah. Yeah, I put that in the Nest because this, this does look quite interesting. I hadn't read this article yet, but I will definitely spend some time on it. Um you're making such great points and it all makes sense. But also I know that a lot of people in blue sky, since I've been in there a little bit are people that are very like turned anti Twitter that have like said, I'm not doing Twitter anymore. I'm, I'm here and this is where I want to be. So yes, there, there is some of that. Yeah. I, that there's a kind of positive aspect in, in, in one way that it's people who know spaces very well. And I think, yes, they are frustrated in having very little development in the last six months of spaces, and they want to do it themselves. 
but also I think a lot of people who have gone over to Blue Sky are people who have had a, a worse experience on Twitter recently. And of course, there's the group of people who migrated in the first wave when Elon took over, who went to Mastodon and now welcome a, an experience that is easier to use. So they, the, there's some crossover there, for sure. I would say it's not all like that. Um, my Again, it depends who you follow, but my ex experience of it as a Twitter-like network has been fairly positive, that it seems to be mostly lighthearted and people are posting interesting things and there's some energy there. So it's not just people that are complaining about Twitter. But again... You know, it, it is Twitter-like, and you can have bad experiences on, on, on both places too. And uh, I don't know. It, it's, again, it's a really interesting experiment, I think, is probably the way to approach it at the moment. It'll be interesting to see where it goes from here and can it really lift off. I see Stephanie is here. And Stephanie, you just got into Blue Sky, right? I know I saw there was that space yesterday, and you all were talking about it. Yeah. <clears throat> Hi, Madeline. Hi, Susie. How are Good you? Good to see you. Good to see you too. Um, yeah, I just got into Blue Sky yesterday. Look, I think, you know, it's interesting. I'm going back and I'm watching um, Joe Rogan actually interviewed Jack and Vijaya on on a podcast. This is a long time ago, so I had to go back and search for it. And it was a really, really interesting conversation. I think that what I certainly acknowledge is that content moderation is really hard. Um, as long as you have people and at scale, it is really hard you want terms of service that you can apply evenly and equally across an entire platform. But content moderation at scale is really hard. And there's there's context to it, right? So in other words, let, let me give you a great example. Gamers might uh, do a tweet or a skeet or something in Clubhouse about killing some character. But in context, they're not actually doing a threat to life. They're simply having a conversation about a character that's founded in gaming, and so there's these, there's these nuances and context, and it's difficult. They can employ some AI, but at the end of the day, you do need people that are making decisions about this. So I think I honor that. That's true, whether it's Clubhouse, whether it's, I mean, across all platforms. And I think Blue Sky is experiencing what many new products experience, which is there's fewer people. People tend to just sort of genuinely be kinder. I think that's the context of having greater communities. You have less of that hive mind. Um, I can tell on Blue Sky that they brought over a ton of journalists, reporters, media organizations to sort of test it out. And then I think some people that have proven to be probably gentler users from a content perspective. And so it's fun right now, right? It's light. But certainly with 2 million plus people that are on a waiting list, the more people you have, the trickier content moderation gets. And this balance between freedom of speech, and I'm not speaking about um, the First Amendment because, of course, that applies to government. But in terms of how platforms view safe content versus unsafe content, it's tricky. Um, so I think right now Blue Sky is enjoying that really nice environment. As long as we have people in the world, things are going to be complicated. And we're in a very complicated time right now, I would argue, in our history um, relative to how we're all behaving, um, what is safe, what is unsafe, et cetera. So it's an interesting time. And um, thanks for having me. I appreciate that. I'll, uh, I'll put myself on mute. Well, thanks for, for coming and joining us. Do you, do you like Sky Spaces? I mean, it's brand, I know it's brand new, a way to do audio inside of Blue Sky. Do, do you like it so far? Yeah, I mean, I think it's like Spaces, right? It's the same type of product. It's an ability for people to gather and have conversations. And so it's the, the, the Blue Sky Spaces are going to be similar to Twitter Spaces. It's just that we have different users, smaller group of people. Um, and, you know, it's funny, the very thing that I'm enjoying about Blue Sky is what I really fell in love with on Twitter. Um, just the work that I do, and as a former MSNBC commentator, I enjoyed the fact that I could follow and interact with journalists that I was maybe pitching a story to, or journalists that I just found common in. Um, breaking news, you know, Twitter is kind of what's happening right now. That many news stations follow issues on Twitter, and they include some of that content in their reporting. Um, and so it's the things I'm still on Twitter because I love the product. There is nothing else like it. Um, if Blue Sky is able to have, um, and when I say kinder version, I know that could sound a little Pollyannish, but um, Twitter's gotten pretty, uh, it's pretty tricky right now. Um, I, I think that there's less content moderation. I think that Elon has a very specific goal relative to um, freedom of speech. Um, it's his platform. He owns it. He can do whatever he wants to do. 
I'm just finding that the things that I'm tweeting about are less um, substantive than I used to before, just because it's not feeling quite as safe. Um, but again, the blue sky spaces are similar to Twitter spaces. And right now the people that gather there are, we're back to sort of interesting stakeholders and policy, politics and other items. And so it's, it's, I'm enjoying that right now. Yeah, I have to say it's a bit refreshing for sure. Yeah, and it's interesting to hear you um, say, Stephanie, about it being, you know, again, a smaller, it's a smaller group of people. It's a more niche community. You've got those very specific topics that people are talking about. Again, you know, I just feel like at the moment, social audio is coming into land in those smaller um, community areas. And Blue Sky Social, you know, Sky Spaces is kind of part of that um, that we're seeing at the moment. Thanks so much for for coming up and, and having a chat with us, Stephanie. That's great. Andrew, you've got the mic. Hello, how are you? Hi, I just wanted to uh, chime in in regards to the numbers and uh, just to let what Morgan was saying, if those numbers are correct. I think the key thing to remember is that if you compare March's numbers, uh, we can see that the spaces are actually growing. Uh, We probably had our biggest month ever in March. And then on the April numbers, which Morgan rightly is looking at on the dashboard, what the numbers don't reflect is that we had some Twitter API issues. So those numbers don't reflect the full picture. So what we can see just on on May is spaces are getting bigger and growing. There's no downturn at all. And we have to always remember that we don't get everything in the dashboard. You know, there's no way just to get a feed that says, give me all the spaces. You've got to use some trickery. But from what we can see, I would say that the idea that spaces are slowing down, even in the UK, I don't think they are. That's very good to hear, Andrew. I was concerned about the data, which is why I included that, because I know that there were some API issues. Elon Musk's BBC space, I think on Spaces Dashboard, still says something like 3.3 million live listeners, and we know that's incorrect. So I was hoping like the the started figures might not have suffered from the same thing. But, yeah, there, um, was, there, there was a, a a little bit of issues in regards to the, the access that we used to have suddenly stopped. So for a couple of days, hours, we don't exactly know when. Uh, we were limited in what we were getting, so there's definitely going to be a downfall in April, hence what you spotted. Yeah. Do you have any read on how different languages are changing? Because... Obviously, I don't have a proxy directly for U.S. usage and have to use English language spaces. And those, I think, on on previous times I've looked at it, were either fairly static or growing, but maybe 2.5%, something like that. Do you, Are you seeing the same kind of thing, that it's, it's growth there, but it's not like double digit, of course? Uh, well... Again, we're, it's very difficult to, like, say, English and US, it's very hard to determine and split them up. Um, one thing we have noticed, and you've probably picked up on it as well, is that Japan, as a country, are absolutely loving Twitter spaces. I mean, it is going through the roof into what they're creating. Um, we are hoping, we mentioned, the, the you know, the team potentially being back on Twitter spaces. What we've always said, we would just love that when you start a space, you're asked the language that you're about to hold your space in. And once you've done it once, it sets it as default. And then we would be able to actually start getting some really accurate data in regards to the voices across the world, different continents, you know, who's producing the most, who's, like say, dipping and increasing over time. At the moment, we've had to build our own little language models on top of it all. So hopefully with, uh, you know, more team power on spaces, developments can happen. But what we've noticed, we haven't seen any drop off in um, Web3 or NFTs. If anything, they're getting stronger. I think that community is growing. They've really found this place. I think it's kind of the de facto, the de facto conversations happen on Twitter spaces. There's, Nice big collectives being built. I think definitely like any community, there's going to be good ones and bad. And there are probably lots of communities that have fallen by the wayside. And that might well have more to do with uh, the quality of the project at the beginning and the longer term goals of those people. 
But the ones that realise that this is a long game and they're in it for the big picture and that the value is the community and is the moat that they're building, they seem to be growing and they seem to be getting more professional, which I think is very interesting. They, they're coming together as a collective. They're starting to create tools for their community to use. They're collectively going out and organizing as an audience instead of saying, I've got a space with this amount of people in the room. They're now realizing that if we join forces, we now look much more attractive to the advertiser. So I think it's all very positive and I'm really, really looking forward to what the next month brings to Twitter spaces and the the new chapters Elon brings to these conversations. Yeah, that's really good to hear. Um, I'd love to, I, I ask this now and again, but if anyone can say more in the Japanese story here, like it is substantial. I think typically it's something that almost twice as many Japanese language spaces as English language ones. And I know Twitter is, in quotes, really big in Japan. It was one of their major foreign markets. But just why social audio has become such a thing there would be, I'd, I'd love to know more about that. Yeah, I agree. I'm going to I'm going to look at doing a bit of a deep dive because I think last we were very close to having 10,000 live spaces at one time last week. And I think four and a half, five thousand of those were Japanese. You know, it's really really substantial. Yeah. And the other extra question is if you have it to hand, but the NFT spaces are you seeing um an increase in, in turnout, or is it the number of spaces that are created in this community? I think it's a little bit of both. And what we've noticed over the last couple of weeks, probably the last 10 days, is that it's moved. There's a huge token um, opportunity or movement at the moment where a lot of the NFT spaces are moving on to these tokens. The token marketplace is flying. Everybody's seeing some massive gains in regards to, I won't mention who they are, but certain tokens making crazy, crazy um increases in valuation and numbers. So we've got lots of speculation, lots of spaces being started. Everybody's trying to get that quick win, as it were. And again, those those numbers and spaces aren't changing at all. They're, they're just getting bigger. And I think once that died down, which is eventually it will, then we'll move back onto the NFT. We'll probably start hearing more Web3, whatever it might be. But the key thing is they realize they can all get on a space and have this one-to-one -one intimate conversation faster and quicker than ever before. And now that obviously video, I don't know if you've all seen that the quality of the video on Twitter is now drastically improved. They're all looking to see how that can be integrated. They're all trying to figure out, instead of just using the Twitter spaces, how can we drive them off to our YouTube channel? Obviously thinking about the video side, now if video comes back into Twitter, that opens up, again, another interesting angle for them all all very exciting and and I'll, I will say next week some very exciting stuff coming to the dashboard oh I love I love it when you end on a, a positive cliffhanger as well <laughs> yes I will say imagine if you could create your own dashboard that's all I'll say you can create your own dashboard your own view that you can either keep private or share to the world oh that sounds interesting this is shareable lists for spaces. Or ingesting lists that already exist. Yeah, subscribing to lists, yeah. Very good, Andrew. I love. I also love these trails. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's just, just keep an eye on, on the, the dashboard updates. We've got, we've got two huge releases. That's one, and the other one's even bigger. But uh, really exciting stuff. So Hello. I just wanted to make sure the numbers... Mm -hmm are not as bad as what that seems that was an issue thank you very much yeah no if, you know at some point i'd i'd love to know like about the data reliability and the other the other question in the background probably for another time but your own story here of having gone past the the cliff of the api cut off how you're how you're dealing with that because obviously spaces dashboard is is still a Oh, you know, it's still a wonderful, rich source of information. So, knowing a bit more about how you dealt with that and how you, you're keeping that plugged in would be really interesting. Well, I'd like you to picture the imagery of Michael Caine 
with all the gold bullion in the back of the bus. The bus is tinkering over the edge. I'm still there. We're not over it yet. I have, I have. We can all see the meme and we're all heading for your end of the bus, Andrew. So <laughs> Thank you. everybody Please to Andrew's end of the bus get right to the now. Front. Get to the front. <laughs> Yeah, so more to come on that, Morgan. We're not. We are. We are in the bus, and the gold is moving, and we're tinkering backwards and forwards. We don't know how it's going to end. All right, we're 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 with you for the ride. Absolutely. Thanks, mate. We totally are. Thank you so much, Andrew, for um, speaking on all things audio and for giving us some positive news about those spaces stats, which is always good to hear. Plus, some great stuff coming out of Spaces Dashboard as always thank you to all of our speakers who came on and uh, shared so much great stuff and we're available in all of your favorite podcast apps we're out there uh, all things audio you can also go to allthingsaudiopodcast.com as well you certainly can and you can catch us here on twitter and use the hashtag all things audio and we'll pick that up throughout the week so that's it for this week but thank you so much to everyone that's been here in the space with us and those of you listening and we'll catch up with you next week bye everybody 